code. All right, guys, uh, you will get an email from me in about an hour or so, giving you a mark, giving the mark for quiz five, the feedback, the correct answer, and also how I got the correct answer. Okay. So check your email in about one hour time. Okay, guys. Um, right, now let me change the camera. Um, Give me a second, guys. Sometimes, um, come on. All right, so this is the tutorial sheet. So, I'm going to start with question number 10. Question number 10. I hope you can. Uh, I know it's not very, I hope you can re read it. If you, if you can't read it, just, just look in your laptop, all right? You have a sample from a binomial with parameters M and P, and you have this estimator for P. The question is to find the bias and the variance, right? Right, now let me show you how to do this. Um, so, So this is uh, this is question question ten, right? Um, you have a random sample x one to x n i i d uh, from a binomial distribution with parameters m and p. Right, and we have we have this estimator for p, and the question is, the first part is to find the bias of the estimator. Remember, the bias is defined as the expectation minus the parameter that you're trying to estimate. Right, so this will be the expectation okay uh, if you, any questions you guys have, please use the chat room guys, okay now if you take the expectation inside, you get. You get this, right? Now, x bar is the sample mean. So you can write it like like this, right? Now, if you take the expectation inside the brackets, uh, you will get you will get this. Now remember XI, XI has the binomial distribution, right? Now I'm sure you guys know what is the expected value of a binomial? Hello guys, talk to me. The expected value of a binomial is is m times p. I'm sure all of you know this, right? Yeah. Okay. OK. 
Okay, so m times p is a constant with respect to i, right? So, so what you have is Right, what you have is n times the constant. Remember, when you sum a constant from one to n, what you get is n times the constant. Okay, now if you simplify this, this will be this will become this. So this is the bias of the estimator. Now let's look at what happens to the bias as n approaches infinity. As n approaches infinity, this guy here goes to zero. So you have zero minus p, which is minus p. Right? Okay, you may recall from a couple of weeks ago that an estimator is said to be asymptotically unbiased if the limit of the bias is zero. But in this case, the limit is not zero. So what you can say is that P hat is not asymptotically unbiased. Yeah, right, because for, for an estimator to be asymptotically unbiased, the limit of it, the limit of the bias must be zero. But in this case, the limit of the bias is not, is not zero, okay? All right, so that, any questions on this before I do the next part? You guys okay? Good, all right, thank you. All right, let me show you how to do the second part of question 10. So this is part one. Part two of question 10 is to find the, the variance, to find the variance of the estimator. So this is still question 10. Now, what I want to find is the variance of P hat, right? Right, which is, excuse me, if it is the variance of x bar plus one divided by n plus two, okay? And this you can write as the variance okay, now, this is a constant, this is a variable, this is a constant. And you should know from, I mean, you may know from probability one that the vari if variance of a random variable plus a constant is the same as the variance of the random variable. So in other words, the constant does not make a difference to the variance. So this is equal to You follow me? Yeah. Now, n plus two is a constant. So when you pull it outside, remember you have to square it. Okay. Now, are you with me so far? Any questions? Let me know, please. Any questions you have? Now variance uh, x bar, as you know, is the sample mean. All right. All right. Now pulling n outside of the bracket becomes n squared. So this is. OK, 
Okay. Now, I'm sure you know that the variance of a binomial random variable is mp times one minus p, right, don't you? So this becomes Right. Now, this guy here is a constant with respect to I. So what you have is what you have is this, All right? N times the constant. The N cancels with one of these Ns. So what you have is m p one minus p divided by okay. So this is the variance of the estimator, and as n goes to infinity, this goes to zero. So which is a good thing, right? Because which is what you would expect. All right. So this completes. Uh, question number 10. Are you, you guys okay with this? Uh, any questions on this derivation? Hello, guys. Are you sure? All right, thank you. All right, so that's complete question number 10. Now, the next question I'm going to look at is question number 9 which is this one. If you have a random sample from a uniform zero theta, uh, and this is an estimator for theta, <coughs> where k is a constant. And the first part is to find k so that this estimator is unbiased for theta. Now, I'm sure you know what unbiased means. Unbiased means that that an estimator is said to be unbiased if the bias is equal to zero. So you have, excuse me, you have a random sample, right, which is uniform on the interval from zero to theta. And you have the estimator, which is this, right? And for this to be unbiased, the bias, its bias must be zero. So the first thing we must work out is the bias of the estimator, which is the expectation of k times x bar minus the parameter, right? which is k is a constant, so you can pull it outside. Okay, and this is uh, k times okay. Right. Now, taking the expectation inside, you have um, the sum. I from one to n of the expectation of xi minus theta, right? Now, I'm sure you may know that if a variable has the uniform distribution, then the expectation is, do you guys remember the formula? If you don't, I can, I can, I can tell you what the formula is. If you have a variable x that is uniformly distributed, on the interval, say, A to B, then I'm sure you know this. Then the expectation of X is equal to A plus B divided by two. Do you, do you remember this or no? Yes, good, good guys. So, so this is the formula I'm gonna use in a sec. Right, so using this formula, 
using this formula, you can compute this as as theta by two, right? Minus theta, right? Now theta by two is a constant with respect to I. So the sum is simply N times the constant. All right, the N and the N cancel. So this becomes K theta by two minus theta. And this is equal to zero if K is equal to two. All right, guys. So in other words, what I have shown you is that I have shown that this estimator when K is two is It's an unbiased estimator of theta. All right, guys. So this completes the first part of, of question nine. Any um, anything you you like to ask me about this? Any everything okay so far or no? Hello, guys. Okay, thank you. All right, so now let me do the second part two of question uh, question nine. Part two is to work out the variance of the estimator. All right, so I'm gonna show you how to find the, the variance of theta hat, right? So this is variance of Excuse me, variance of theta hat, which is the variance of two times x bar, right? Now two is a constant, so if you pull it outside, it becomes four times the variance of x bar. So this is four times the variance of Okay, now n is a constant, so if you pull it outside, it becomes n squared times the sum of the variance of xi. Now, again, xi is a uniform random variable. All right, so I'm sure that you know, most of you, I'm sure all of you know the the formula for the variance of a uniform. So if, if, in case you don't know, let me remind you, if you have a uniform variable A to B, uh, then the variance of X, right, is equal to B minus A squared divided by 12, right? I'm sure you guys know this formula. So I'm gonna use this formula now. Yeah. So if you use this formula, this will become four divided by n squared times the sum i from one to n of um, theta squared divided by 12. Right. Now theta squared divided by 12 is a constant. So this becomes four over n squared multiplied by n times the constant. Right. Okay. And this will be, if you simplify this, this will be theta squared divided by three times n. All right. So this is the this is the variance of the estimator. Is that clear, guys? Okay. And as n approaches in infinity, this approaches zero, right? Okay, so 
So this estimator that two times x bar has good properties in the sense that it has bias equal to zero and the variance approaching zero as n approaches infinity. So it has both the, the good properties. It is unbiased and it's also consistent, all right? All right, so that's those are the two pro the two good properties of a, of an estimator, All right? All right, guys. So this completes question nine. Are you okay with this? So, hello, guys. Talk to me, guys. If it's not okay, please feel free to say so. I'm happy to go over. All right. All right. So that's question. So we are done with question nine. The next one, I'm gonna look at question eight. So it has two parts one more time. So you have, first is you have a random sample from a population with mean zero and varying sigma squared. And the first part is to find K such that this estimator is unbiased for sigma squared. All right, so let's see how we can do that. So this is uh, question eight. So, so this is what you have. You have an estimator for sigma squared, which is k times k times this. Yeah. All right, and we want to find k such that this estimator is unbiased. All right. So what you need to do is to you need to find the the bias of it, right? And show that and set it equal to zero and then solve for K, right? So this is the expectation of the estimator, which is right. This is the definition of bias, yeah. Now taking the expectation inside, you get K times okay, like this, yeah. And the next thing I'm gonna do, I'm gonna sh I'm gonna do a trick here. You will see what I'm doing now. I'm gonna apply a small, small trick. Right, I'm gonna write this. You, you see what I'm doing here? Can you see? Can you guys see what I'm doing? Uh, I have I have subtracted this term here, right, and added the same terms. So I haven't changed anything. Yeah. So I added two new terms. They are the same. They are the same as each other. One has minus. One has plus. Now the reason the reason I have done this is because. Let me explain. If you look at If you look at this, can you see what that is? This, the expectation of xi squared minus the square of the expectation. What, what do you know about this, guys? This is the variance of xi, yeah? All right, so, so what you have is the following. You have the variance of Xi plus the square of the expectation of Xi. Yeah, all right. Now, if you go back to the question, if you, if you look at the question one more time, right? It says 
you have a population with with the mean equal to zero and the variance equal to sigma square, all right? So, so what we are saying is that this guy here is the variance, the population variance. This is equal to sigma square. And this, what you have here is the population mean, which is the mu, and this is equal to zero. All right? You follow me? All right. So, so what you have is k times the sum of sigma squared plus zero. Yeah. Then it's minus sigma squared. Yeah. Okay, guys. Now, sigma squared is a constant, so the sum is n times the constant. So this becomes k times n sigma squared minus sigma squared, right? And this is equal to zero if k is equal to one over n. Yeah. So what? So to just to summarize the answer, what we have shown so far is that this guy here with k one over n is an unbiased estimator of sigma squared. All right, guys, are you okay with this part? Or... Oh, I've got a question from Robert. Yeah, the reason the expectation of Xi is zero, Robert, is because what is the expectation of Xi is the population mean, which is given to be, if you, it says the question says the population with non mean mu equal mu is the population mean Robert, and that is equal to zero according to the question. So, therefore, the expectation of xi is zero. All right, guys. Any other questions on on the first part of question eight? Hello, guys. Any other question on question on the first part of question nine? Or is it okay so far? Or... Hmm? Are you okay so far or no? Come on, talk to me guys. Are you okay? All right. Okay, thank you. All right, the, 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 the next, the second part of, okay, the second part of question eight is, is to find the sampling distribution of the estimator if we assume that Xi are independent normal zero sigma squared. So that's what I'm gonna do now. So this is, so this is question eight still part two, All right? So, so this is this is our estimator, right? This is this is our estimator. Right? And we are assuming that in this in this part we are gonna assume that Xi Xi is normal with zero mean and sigma squared is the variance. Right? Okay, now the first thing I'm gonna do, the question is to find the distribution of this. The first thing I'm gonna do is the following. Thank you. 
you see you see what i'm you see what i'm doing here guys well i'm trying to standardize i'm trying to standardize this normal variable by dividing by the standard deviation i mean you know this result i don't know whether you remember this that if x is normal with with these parameters then Do, do you guys remember this result? This is a result I think I mentioned before. You should look at the video on the normal uh, distribution. You will you will see this. This is one of the properties I mentioned in that video. Yeah, right. And that's what I'm trying to do here. I'm trying to standardize this by dividing by the standard deviation because the mean is zero here. The mean is zero. So this guy here will become standard normal. So using this property, we have sigma times the standard normal. All right. Now sigma, sigma is a constant, so you can pull it outside. So it becomes because of, a, of a, the squared here, it becomes sigma squared divided by n. Right. Now, now another property I mentioned uh, in the, I don't know, if you look at the video on the chi-square distribution, right? One property I mentioned is the following, that if you, may, you, you might have forgotten this, but you, you might have forgotten this, but in, 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 if you remember, this is this is a property I mentioned in the video. Uh, this is a property I mentioned in the video on. If you look at the 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 video on um, the video on chi squared. Yeah, you will you will see this property. All right, so using this property, you can say that this guy here, is class squared with one degree of freedom, All right? All right. Are you guys okay so far or no? Okay, and finally, Finally, one property that I mentioned again in the video on 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 class squared is that if you if you are adding if you are adding um, two independent class squared variables, <coughs> then the the sum of two independent class squared variable is also class squared with the degree of freedom equal to the sum of the degrees of freedom. So what you will get here is a chi squared with n degree of freedom, n because because you have n you have one to n right you have n chi squared variables each with one degree of freedom. So 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 the sum of the degrees of freedom is is n. All right. So this this also the the. The step from this line, this line to this line, also follows from the video on chi-square distribution, right? So please, if you forgot this material, if you have forgotten this material, please look at the this video, right? All right. So the the step from this this line to this line, and the step from this line to this line, both both follow from the video that I did on chi squared. All right, so in case you forgot, in case you forgot, uh, please look at that video one more time, All right? All right, so this completes um, question number eight. Are you okay with this guys or no? Please, if it's not okay, please feel free to, please feel free to, uh, 
ask questions. Hey, all of you okay? Yeah, okay, thank you. All right, so the next question, so I'm done with question eight now. So the next one I'm gonna look at is question seven. It has two parts. The first part, all right, you have 10 uh, numbers, right, from a normal distribution with these parameters 48 and 36. The first part is to find the probability that the sample variance is between 25 and 60. So let me show you how to do this. This 48 and 36. So this is question seven. You have 10 numbers, 10 data points, right? Which are IID, normally distributed with parameters. This is the mean, this is the variance. Part one is to find the probability that, that the sample variance is between 25 and 60. Do you, do you guys remember the sample variance? I, I talked about this long time ago. Remember, remember the sample variance is, there are two definitions I gave you. One has, ha, is a biased version, the other one is an unbiased version. And people normally use the unbiased version, which has N minus one in the bottom. So in this case, the sample size is 10. So, so this is one over 10 minus one times the sum This is what you see, right? Remember this version. This is the unbiased version of the sample variance. I talked about this some time ago. So 10 minus one is nine. Now if you multiply across by nine, this is what you will get. Nine times 25, uh, yeah, less than or equal to, nine times 60, yeah. Um, no, I, at least I think people normally use the unbiased version. It's, it's not a problem if you choose the biased version, the answer will be slightly different. It will be slightly different, yeah. You, you can use the biased version, but I think it's, it's preferable to use the unbiased version, right? All right, the next thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna divide everything within the brackets by the population variance, which is 36. And the reason I'm doing that, I will explain in a minute. All right, okay, right. Now, the reason I have done this is because of the following property. You may recall this property. This is another property I talked about in the video, in the video on chi squared. That if you have a random sample from a normal with these parameters, then the following property is true. Do you guys remember this or not? This is a property I, I mentioned some time ago. Uh, if, if you don't remember, please please have a look at the video on the chi square distribution, right? Now, what you have here, what you have here is the same as this, with sigma squared equal to 36 and n equal to 10, right? So this guy here must follow this distribution with n minus one degree of freedom, which is 10 minus one or nine. So using this property, 
using this property, we can write the above as 25 by 4. Write this simplifies to this. Less than or equal to chi squared 9. Less than or equal to 15. Right, because this simplifies to 15, right? You follow me? So I, use, I basically use this property to get from this line to this line, right? And next, um, this becomes this you can write as the difference of these probabilities. Yeah, right, you can write this probability as the difference of these two probabilities. And this, for to compute this, you can, you need to use R. Um, so to compute this probability, you need to use P, C, H, I, S, Q uh, in brackets 15 comma D, F is the degree of freedom equal to nine. And to compute this probability, you have to use P, C, H, I, S, Q 25 divided by four with D, F equal to nine all right so this so if you're using r or you have r open in front of you you can you can type these two commands and that will give you the answer for the probability that s squared is between 25 and 60. is that is that okay guys or any questions hello guys talk to me so the, the trick here is to use this property. The, the trick is to use this property that to go from this line to this line, right? Okay. Okay. Right. Are you, any other, any questions guys, please let me know. Are you okay or not? All of you okay? All of you? All right. Okay. Let me, let me, so this is part one of question seven. Part two, part two is asking you how, what the sample size should be so that the probability S squared is greater than 20 is equal to 0 .0 0 0.9. Okay. All right, so let me show you how to do part two, part two of question seven. So this is question seven, part two. All right, so you, you are looking for the probability that S squared is greater than 20 is 0 0.9, 0 .9, right? So this is, so the question is to, is to find the N so, so, that, so that this probability is equal to 0 0.9. Now remember S squared is one of, as I mentioned earlier, One is this. Yeah. Okay. And the next thing I'm gonna do, as I did in the first part, is I'm gonna divide both by the variance, the population variance, which is 30, 36, as you may recall, right?
Yeah. Now, according to the, the property that I just mentioned, couple of this property in the red box, right? The thing on the left hand side must must be chi squared uh, with degree of freedom n minus one. And the right hand side can be simplified to to this, yeah? Are you guys with me? Yeah. All right, now you can, you can write this probability as, as one minus the probability that Right, you can write this as one minus this probability. So the probability that so this probability is zero point one. All right, now once again, you you cannot solve this using hand. I mean by hand, you need to use R to solve this for n. So if you are using R, uh, the, the left-hand side can be written as P C H I S Q uh, five, all right, then comma D F all right? And then, there is a function in R that, that you can use to solve this equation, right? And if you use that function, you will get N to be approximately equal to 15. So the answer is, so the answer to part two of question seven is that the sample size should be equal to 15, all right? Are you guys okay or what? Hello guys, talk to me please. Are you, are you okay with, so this completes question number seven on the tutorial sheet. Are you okay guys? Hello. Okay, thank you. All right, the next question, so I'm, so I'm done with question seven now. I only have one minute left, so I don't know. Uh, question six is um, is on is on finding the mean and the variance of an estimator and the approximate distribution. It's not so difficult. Um, it's it's not so difficult. You can. Um, um, I mean, since I have already run out of time, um, I will I will post. I think the the solutions to all the ten questions um, have already been posted to the YouTube channel. So if you have access to the YouTube channel, I know if you are in China you don't, but um, if you have access to the YouTube channel, you you will be able to see. Uh, the full solutions to all the 10 questions um, in the YouTube channel. And I will post in the meantime, and later on today, I will also post the full solutions to the, to the uh, U university channel, that is U or, U or M uh, channel later today, I will do that. So all of you will be able to see the full solutions. You will also see the, the type solutions uh, and also the handwritten solutions for all the 10 questions later today, right? All right, guys, so is there some question you, you want to talk to me about? Any, any other questions you want to talk to me about now? Please let me know, right? And by the way, I will, in the next half, an, in the next half, half an hour, I will send you an email giving you a mark, the feedback and the
correct answer and the uh, how I got the correct answer for quiz number five, right? So please check your email in the next half an hour, okay? Um, and as usual, any, any problems with the course, please feel free to contact me 24 seven, right? By email, Skype, Zoom, or phone. My phone number is 0161-273-2941. All right, guys, so have a great day. Have a great afternoon or evening or morning, wherever you are and have a good weekend. All right, so please, once again, please feel free to contact me any, any problems you have, okay? Um, yes, Alice, I mean, sometimes you can use the bias question. I mean, the answer will be slightly different. So it will, it will not make a lot of difference to the answer whether you use the biased or the unbiased version, All right? It's so, um, but as I said before, um, the unbiased version is the better one to use, right? All right, guys, take care of yourself wherever you are and have a good day and a good weekend, okay?